<laughs> I like the mine. <laughs> hey everybody, hey Darkstorm Smooth, Life's Faded, Reformulate. Welcome back for a good afternoon stream. We're going to get started with the code base, but actually before we do that, I was just reading this. There are a bunch of changes in VS Code. Sticky file path separators and separator buttons, what does this mean? I don't understand what this is even showing me. Oh, I see. When you search for something. What does searching for percent do? I don't think I've ever seen that. Oh, it's find all? Oh man, I didn't even know this was a thing. Do I do I have something to read me? I typed game. Yeah, wow. Neat. I did not know about this. Wow, the percent sign, VS Code percent sign search. When is this, when was this added? Symbol seeker? Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, no idea. You spent quite a lot more on that message, smooth, than Dark Storm did. <laughs> All right, notebook run. I don't care about that. Copilot improvements, improved inline chat UI, commit messages. Oh, commit messages. Did they write about that? They didn't even write about that? Starts as a floating control, making it more lightweight. Okay. I mean, they said they improved commit messages. Oh, here we go. Improved quality of generated commit messages. We're now also including the commit messages of the 10 most recent commits in the repository. I see. All right, what else do we have? Terminal inline chat. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, and then this is kind of interesting too, custom labels for open editors. Like a lot of times, especially in web dev, you end up with a lot of files with the same names. And this lets you do something. I don't know, it's a very long video, but they end up changing the tabs up here to be something different. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so what I kind of wanted to look into first is what are we doing for testing? Do you need a very basic template? I added end unit as a testing framework though. Um, yeah, probably, but I wanted to see, is there a way to test Godot stuff? So someone under the name Chickensoft, I think. Chickensoft Godot. Yeah, this. C-sharp game template for Godot 4 with debug launch configurations. I have to enable two-factor auth later. I'll do that later though. Uh, debug launch configurations, testing, code coverage, dependency update checks, and spell check working out of the box. I kind of wanted to just test this out and see what happens with this. Have you tried this, Darkstorm? I saw that too. That's the one I never got working. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, let's, let's give it a look. Template allows you to easily create a C-sharp game for Godot. .NET tool allows you to easily create, install, and use up use templates. Mm. Okay. Well, let's paste this here. So I'm gonna just make a new directory, I guess. Make dir test chicken. All right. cd my game name and dot net build you intend to execute a dot net application application build does not exist install the dot net sdk or update that to match an installed sdk what is this happening 4.2.1 i don't remember how to see what i have installed I don't think there's news on the good old four web support, uh, but I'm not sure yet. It's only C sharp where it was missing anyway. <clears throat> so if I just type dot net, what happens here? Version or info or something. There we go. Installed SDK is 8.0.100. And this thing is looking for what? Four point something. Oh no, there's this SDK. That one is, oh, I need, I need that one in, installed, I guess. Install this or update this to match an installed SDK. Okay. So how do I install an SDK? Mac OS installed 
.NET SDK. <clears throat> oh, it's just a homebrew thing. Do they write the different versions that are here? Eh, just click this. All right, where is automated install? Here we go. Did I install this with brew though? Brew cask list? Use brew, okay, fine. Try brew list. Do we have .NET in here? No. And does cask show it? No. So I don't remember how I installed this. Although maybe I have it written down over here somewhere. .NET mono Godot mono C sharp and Godot .NET. To install packages with this. <clears throat> how did I ever install this to begin with? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. <clears throat> I'll have to look through the instructions. Is this Z shell? The shell is Z shell, yeah. And I've got a lot of my setup described there in that repo. Um, yeah, so I don't remember how I installed this. It says install this here. Okay, I must have just downloaded it, I guess. In which case, downloading the new one should also just be fine. So it's looking for 101, or we could change it to be 100. To be honest, I kind of want to just install whatever the newest one is. Yeah, let's just install this and have it have it use 204. It's probably not a major difference. All right, what do we got here? Install, engage privacy mode. Hello, engage privacy mode. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. Why isn't this working? Oh, there we go. Okay. That was my computer, by the way. Okay, so it completed. So now I should be able to go modify this and let's just duplicate this line and set this to 204. Um, yeah, I'll put this like this. Oh, comments aren't permitted anywhere. Yeah. 8.0.204. Okay, great. Now we try to run that command again, right? .NET build. Issue was encountered verifying workloads. Do .NET workload update. It says build succeeded, though. I, I guess I'll run this anyway. Inadequate permissions. Run with elevated permissions. Engage privacy mode. <laughs> it's just not listening to me. What is it getting when I say that? Yeah, I should probably just change it to be that, huh? Code, vocal. Yeah. All right, activate privacy. Let's see if that works. There we go. All right, did this work or no? It's seemingly not doing anything. Maybe .NET workload up to, oh no, it just takes a long time. Okay, there we go. All right, it ran and we built and I don't know what this means now. Enjoy the new video, yeah, thanks for watching. Huh, so now what do I do? So getting started. Now I guess I open up the project. Main.cs and main whatever. Do I have a Godot project even? I don't even know. All right, well, let's try getting this. Can't do that. I guess import. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Important edit. Last editing Godot one four point one. 
Okay, well, still, let's see. All right, so I should be able to play this, and I'm guessing it's just going to launch a blank scene. Test button. This doesn't even do anything. And I mean, I'm guessing that's the point, is that it doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, main? Game? Game has test button. Test button hat. Whoops. I didn't mean to press that thing. I meant to press this thing. Yeah, it has a pressed on test button press. How do I see where that is? Maybe I click this. Yes, I do. It just does button presses plus plus. <laughs> okay, but I, that doesn't print anywhere, does it? No, it doesn't. All right, well, I guess we have to assume that that's working. And then there's probably some test thing somewhere that checks how many button presses you have. Yeah, it does. Okay, so how does this work? Can I run this test? I wonder how you even do that. Because if so, this would really not be too bad. Run the game. This is for Visual Studio Code as well. Wow, so we can just launch this whole thing, right? Is there a task or something? There's a, there's a Godot Tools button. Whoa, what is this? I don't, I don't think I'd ever seen this here before. I probably always had that. I can I can see the scene tree right in VS Code. Oh man, and I can even go to oh man, this is this is nuts. I probably already had that functionality and just never realized it. Wow. I'm learning a whole bunch of stuff. Are we gonna be developing an adventure game? Not an adventure game. Check out the Sella Skella seller thing right there. Your inlay hints may show asset assignments too. Yeah, this is very interesting. Okay, so where do I see my tasks that I have? Run and debug, extension, source control, maybe this one? Yeah, wow, look at that. Debug game, debug current scene, debug test, debug current test. This is this is incredible. If they just set all this up. Okay, so let's go to debug test, I guess. I don't know, and click run. See what happens. Missing launch.json. Programs. Oh, you probably do need to customize this. Yeah, I need to specify where Godot is. And I had to do this for Jump Royale as well, right? So code, Jump Royale, RG, what's it called? Launch, launch.json. Hmm. This is problematic. <laughs> where is this thing? There is no JSON file. And yet I remember doing something like this, right? Tree. Grep, Jason. Huh, why did I not find any of those? If I do this, what's going on right now? It's not finding these things. Not that these even probably matter. Oh, it's probably not finding things that we're going to ignore. Uh, let's go into Jump Royale, I guess. And then, yeah, I don't know where this stuff was. I know I had done it, though. Make sure you put a JSON. Oh, it's in .vs code. I see. It doesn't get checked in. VS code. Except for that's not even here. Maybe it's up a directory. There it is. Didn't realize where this went. All right, there's the launch.json. So now what do we use as our program in there? env Godot 4. Okay, we'll just copy paste this into this one then, right? Program is env Godot. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. Mine just happens to have a 4 at the end. All right, now we should be able to run this. Oh, it opens up Godot though. Oh, I thought there was some way to get this work through the command line. Also, it looks like it's just totally breaking. RC owner is true. I'm going to stop that and try running it again. It's moving the mouse. Like the cursor actually goes to this button. Oh, that time the test passed, I think. Yeah, test passed. Wow, interesting. Yeah, I don't think it searched in dot folders. Yeah, I hadn't realized that. I think they also mentioned the CLI runner. Interesting. Okay, let's go take a look at that. 
Test run directly inside the GitHub runner machine on every push. Test failed the past. Figure which simulated graphics environment you want to run the tests on. Tests can only be run from the Ubuntu runners. If you know how to make the workflow install Mesa in a virtual window manager, we'd love to hear from you. Tests are executed by running the Godot test project from the command line and passing in the relevant arguments in Godot to Godot so that go.test go can discover and run tests. Uh, I'm not sure I understand that part. <clears throat> Yeah, I might have interrupted it. I wasn't, it wasn't clear to me that it was going to start Godot at all. Um, so I, I don't think this means you can run from the command line. I think this is just saying that it's passing it to the command line of this. What is this? C-sharp test runner, run test from the command line. Oh no, this does make it sound like you can run it from the command line. How do you, how do you do that then? I guess just because I was debugging the test. Hmm. I don't remember enough about how we make tasks. There's a build task though. So maybe we can go find that. I don't need that open. RG build. Where are you? No, maybe, maybe build is a well-known thing. All right. I'll have to figure out where they did this. There's a console executable. When you download mono, maybe it runs this. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'll have to look into this some more. Do they mention running from the command line here? Tests run directly inside the game. That's what I wanted to avoid. Oh, wait, here though. On CI and CD, software graphics drivers from Mesa emulated graphics device for Godot to render to, allowing you to run visual tests in a headless environment. Okay, I see. <clears throat> so this is a very different kind of test than what I was thinking. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what kind of test I wanted to do originally. I guess I just want to make sure that I can test any function inside of some random scene. So maybe we should go try that out. Like a test that can just run from the command line. What is this? This inherits from control because this is a control. Yeah. Yeah. So like, could I make a static function here and call it from the command line, I guess. Yeah, this is more of an integration test, I would say. Yeah. Um, so my understanding of what the problem was, and maybe I'm misunderstanding this because Darkstorm, you and I talked about this a while ago, but I thought we couldn't even, like, let's say I added in something like public static void uh, testeroni here. And so I do this and I just say, what is it, like console dot. Is it capitalized? Anyway, console out right line hello world. That doesn't work. What is it? Print or something? I don't remember what the uh GD print. Darn it, wow, I don't remember any of this stuff. This is how long it took for me to totally eject this information from my brain. GD dot print. Okay, there we go. Anyway, okay, so there we go. This is what is this? Use expression body for method. Oh, sure. Okay, whatever. All right, so here's a function. And this is not doing anything like that Godot probably needs an editor open for, but gd.print should print a standard out, I'd guess. Like, could I run this from a unit test or is there also a problem even with this? Because this is what I thought this was not possible or at least not easily possible for some reason. Obviously, if I were just writing like straight up C sharp, this would be super simple, right? I'm just calling a function. But I, yeah, I thought I couldn't do this with the unit test thing. Do they mention any unit test things? Hmm. Let me check this really quick. Okay, yeah, because I thought what, what you ran into was some problem with like not being able to load in any of the Godot classes 
And so I think you mentioned having to use like a special random number generator too. And I never looked into this stuff myself. And so I don't know exactly how this works. Where is it? Yeah, this, this RNG thing. Yeah, RNG. And so my understanding was like, we couldn't use the Godot functions for this, but I'm not sure. I wasn't sure why. All right, so you mentioned n unit. Let's look into that. And let's just see, could we get this to work, I guess? I'm not sure. So what do I have to do now? Dot net new dot net solution at. Ready template with n unit if you want. Well, I wanted to add it to this one because I think it'd be nice to have both. Did I go offline and then online again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take a break for lunch. So .NET new command creates a test project that uses n unit as the test library. So maybe this is what I want to do when I get a new project. Never tried adding two. Well, what I'm kind of thinking is, okay, so for integration tests, it, it might be nice to use this, this chicken soft thing. And then for unit tests, we just use whatever and unit, I guess. Um, and like I said, my understanding was that there's some problem with me just even calling this function here, but I want to try that out because I never tested it for myself. Uh, so what if we just put this in here, .NET new end unit, what happens? Creating this template will make changes to existing files. To create the template anyway, run the command with force. I, pff, I don't know. <laughs> Whoops. All right, here's the current file. So let's just save this as old. And then let's go make this change with force. And now here's the new file. So we're just going to compare the old one. Compare active file with the new one. All right, what did it do? And it looks like it totally wiped a bunch of stuff out. <laughs> this may not have been a good idea. Yeah, I don't think that was a good idea. I think we need a new project then. Yeah, that's my guess. Okay, so let's just undo that. We'll just do that. And now this should resemble the exact same thing that we see there, right? Yep. Just just have different, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so then let's go, ooh, how do we even do that? We need to, we need this, the solution to contain the project, isn't that how this works? My game name, cat my game name dot solution. Yeah, this has a project here. Okay, so then I think we need to add a project first. And there is this here. So they made a new solution, make prime service, new class lib, and then add a CS proj thing in there. So I think I want to make der n unit tests. And then run this new command over here. This will just make a project file in here. So that, that should look good. And then we add that using this. Yeah, I think so. N unit test slash n unit test dot CS project. Okay, yeah, so that's been added to the solution. So now if I open the n unit stuff, I guess now that needs a reference back to this project. So I need to look at what the solution is called again. Project is my game name. So n unit test needs a reference back to that. My game name dot what CS project, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I open up the unit test from here and I should be able to call, Oh, that's a bunch of broken stuff. Naming rule violation. Formatting type or namespace could not be found. That doesn't seem very good. <laughs> Let's restart this and see if that fixes anything. Oh, I think it fixed. Nope. It didn't fix anything. Well, there was a, a brief glimmer of hope. I sent you an invite if you want to take a look. Yeah, let me go see. 
Where do I find this invite? Oh, here it is. S systems, view invitation, accept. Sample test. This is the end unit stuff. Then test systems. This has the Godot project. What I want to do though, is I want to see what happens when we call a function. Uh, wait, what happens if I hit run all tests? Zero warnings, 24 errors. And what's the problem here? Duplicate global system runtime versioning target framework attribute. This is in my game name.cs project. Missing usings. I probably am. I, I'm all I did is run the instructions that were where the browser tab go. I ran well some of these instructions. I didn't even run all of them, I guess. Yeah. Command dot on the setup keyword. I don't think I want that one in particular. I think I want I think I want this from N unit, right? And I must have messed something up. Maybe I need to build this. No, that's what's failing. Yeah, I am not totally sure. Do we get any end unit suggestions at all? No, just the chicken soft stuff. And this can't be right. Yeah, this can't be right. Can have two duplicate assemblies. I'm just not sure what that means here though, exactly. It says it's coming from the main project file. How about this? Let's close out of everything for a sec. Don't save. And actually let's close out of all this stuff too. And while we're at it, just, just get rid of it all. Everything. Goodbye. Okay. Then let's open up this entire thing. So now the CS project that we want is this one. And this apparently has some issue. Maybe you need three projects. Yeah, that is, that's, that might be needed. I'm not actually sure. I don't know why this isn't highlighting. Oh, this is CS project old. Um, why does that even exist? What if I just delete you? There we go. Now what's in here? I don't see any red squigglies just in this one. And this only knows about run out of test. It says it's using N unit though. I don't know, maybe I should delete the reference here and just have it use NUnit and now it shouldn't even know about the chicken soft stuff. No, that's not even true. I am not sure. They have a test case thing. Where did this come from? <laughs> Unit test one.cs. It was from me running the, uh, it's from me running this, right? Creates a test project that uses it as a test library. Generate a template configures a test runner in the CS project file. May reference older versions. You can use .NET CLI to update the packages. .NET new command in the previous step added the Microsoft test SDK, test framework, test adapter. See the entire file in the samples repository. Okay, yeah. And unit also has setup so that, but can't you specify which one you want to use? Like, wouldn't I be able to say something here like using n unit dot, like, shouldn't there be a setup in here somewhere? I don't know where this is. They don't have a using statement here, do they? I guess they just did this. Yeah. Did that fix anything? It says using directive is unnecessary. Is this because the CS proj file knows that it's going to be used everywhere? 
Oh yeah, there's a using include. Oh, interesting. Okay, so then this is implied. So then why is this an issue? Could not be found. Are you missing a using director of a reference, uh, assembly reference? I don't see a problem there. I guess the issue is that whole duplicate assembly thing that we're trying to fix. So .NET build, this is going to fail, right? All right, let's search for this. And the following two lines of property group, generate assembly info false, generate target framework attribute false. Is this what they did in their repo that they have? Where is their repo? I think I closed it. Finished version of the test, I think it's this. Yeah, so over here, do they do anything special in there? You just have target framework. I think mine is more fleshed out because it had all that other stuff in there. Just target framework, yeah. But then in this one, they have these two things in this property group. I'm gonna try adding this just to see because it's not like I really have any idea of what's going on right now. So that's unique and this is unique, yeah. So there's that, does that help at all? Well, now there are 16 errors instead of 24. Duplicate system runtime target. Wait, no, maybe they're always 16. <laughs> Did this actually do anything? Oh, I accidentally put a, a weird bullet point in there. Oh yeah, it did get rid of eight errors. There's probably more to this. You need a CS project for the game than a separate CS project for testing. Okay, maybe I should just start from the very basics of this. This is standard in C sharp, but I mean, what is it? Th what is what am I trying to do here? That's actually wrong. I wonder if like is it because I nested the CS proj folders? Might be that. Two trying to make it into one assembly, but I have two projects. That's the part I guess I'm not clear on is I have the game project and then the unit test project. And I'm not sure why that separation isn't enough as is. Is there a solution? There is a solution. Also, these have two different target frameworks. That might be the problem. <laughs> uh, let's have them target the same framework, I guess. Does that fix anything? No. Solution at the root and a folder for each project. Yeah, that I, I'll try to do that, I suppose. I, I think that might be better. So let's make a directory that's just like game. And then let's make a test directory and then move and unit tests stuff to the test directory. And then rmdir and unit tests. So that should all be set up correctly. And now game is pretty much everything else. I'll just do this through this. So it's everything that's not in game and is not in, oh, darn it. Oh, darn it. Oh my God. Stupid, 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 stupid. <laughs> test already existed. You can't have lowercase n capital test. Oh man, I'm gonna have to redo this. Then you make a third folder with yet another CS proj for the chicken sock repo. At least I think so. Okay, well, let me try that then, yeah. All right, let's go take your code that was here. CD dot dot slash, I'll just put it here, I guess. Git clone test systems. Okay, so if I do dot net build here, this should build, yeah, cool. So now we have test systems is just what, end unit? No, test is where it is. Cat test.cs proj. End unit is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So then sample tests. So this should work. I should just be able to click run all, right? 
unable to get working directory for project miscellaneous files. What? Miscellaneous files. I'm going to close VS code and try this again. Dot net restore. Okay, now let's go to that sample test thing and try running it. Where'd the run button go? Do you want to install the recommended C sharp dev kit? Do I need that? Test your code of the integrated unit test discovery and execution. Don't I have some C sharp extension already? I don't even have this. What? What is installed right now? <laughs> How do I have any C sharp stuff working at all? These are all the ones I have installed. I could have sworn I got something for C sharp. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Also, wow, I have a lot more than I thought here. Strange. There's one specifically for Godot. There is, yeah. I didn't know if that handled C sharp syntax highlighting, though. This is probably not for C sharp. Although, I guess there's syntax highlighting by default, and that's just extra stuff. Yeah, it doesn't have flesh out feature by default. Okay, well, yeah, let's install the C sharp stuff, I guess. This has 27 million installations. Rich language support shipped alongside C sharp dev kit. While it's possible to use this as a standalone, we recommend using the other one. We'll automatically install this. Oh, okay. So let's just install this then. Connect account. Oh no, I don't have a Visual Studio subscription. I don't, I don't probably need that. All right, so. You've been signed out. Hmm. I see, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, so I think this should be good. Uh, oh wait, there's a play button there. Why? I liked it when it was when it was showing up over here. <laughs> Whatever, as long as I can run it somehow, I guess. Okay, what's it say? Terminal will be reused by task. Press any key to close it. Did it? Did it run? Yeah, I guess there's just a checkbox over here saying it ran. Remember to disable the Intel something extension from this kit. Uh, I don't even see that here. Yeah, I don't see it here. Nothing in C sharp, at least. <laughs> Please do not resist. Adding one more day to the year. Microsoft 366 account. All right. So what I think we need to do is we need tests to rely on a test system, CS proj. There should be a reference. Yeah, there already is a reference to that. Okay, so if I went over to test systems and then there is no code over here, I guess I'd have to make something. Do you have this one? Godot C sharp? Let me see. I didn't see it. I just looked at what was installed and then I searched for C sharp and it didn't have anything. Yeah, I just have I just have Godot tools. If I type C sharp, there's well, I mean these are now installed, but they weren't installed originally. So I, I had nothing there. So yeah, I don't know. Is that stuff you would probably use? It gets in the way. Okay, I'll try to take a look after I get something set up over here. So the next thing I think I want to do here is open up the Godot project. So we go to test systems and we open up that. So get CD and go over to Godot and quit the project list. You have test explorer in the command palette, test explorer. Focus on test explorer review. Yeah, I do. But how do I get back that thing that, oh, oh wait, oh, I'm not even in the right profile. There we go. Uh, yeah, how do I get back the ability? There it is. Okay, so it must be something that I had in a different profile. I didn't realize that. 
yeah, I like this so that I can see easily how to run these. <clears throat> and yeah, now it says how many pass and everything. All right, great. So that's all working great. Now I want to load this project in and we're going to import that project. I think I accidentally clicked that twice. Hopefully it's fine. Okay, so we're going to just make a scene and we're going to, I don't know, add a sprite underneath or something. I want something that would require Godot to do some rendering. We don't have any icons though, so I guess I need to add in a sprite, huh? Uh, where do we find an easy sprite? Godot, it doesn't matter. All of them should have icon.svg. Yeah, this. So put this in here. All right, you are now this sprite. Great. So there's our scene, and we're just going to call this scene with sprite. I'm going to attach a script. And I want this to be C sharp. How do we change this? Here it's node 2D. Yeah, well, that looks good. So we create it. It opened up over here, which is rather unfortunate, but whatever. We should just be able to load it like this. So scene with sprite. All right. Oh man, look at this nonsense. Do I just save? Does it fix it? No. Oh God, what's it doing? <laughs> C Sharpier needs to be installed to support formatting files. All right, install as local tool. Uh, is this just going to fix it for me? Because I don't want to have to. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right, nice. So um, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah, I was going to add in a function here. So we'll do actually not even add in a function. Can I create this thing? from the test. Yeah, now can I run this? Actual command not found. Wanted to execute .net.test.run. What? It was just running before. It's not that one line, right? Oh, it is that one line. Oh, interesting. So this is causing it to break. Oh, no, now it's just working. Okay, so this failed, I assume. Let me just clear this whole thing. How do we clear this? Clear. Aborted. Why? <clears throat> I'm guessing it's because I'm trying to create this new scene, right? But I'm not totally sure why because I don't see an error here. I guess we could debug it. Oh, I don't think it's going to help. So if we step into this, it just fails immediately. Skip to loading. Stepping over non-user code seen with sprite.constructor. Uh, okay, let me try something else here. If I do public static void testeroni, which is what I want to do originally, and then console.write line. <laughs> hey, nice. Okay, now can I put that in here? That should work, right? Yeah, that passes. And did it print anything out? It's so hard to read this. I'm just going to clear this again and run it again. It might have a special location where it it sends test output because I don't see testeroni here. But it at least called the function. And I guess what we could do is we could just have this return an integer or something like that and just say return five. And then over here, say something like assert uh, this dot equal was it is equal to? Is this even a real function or is this just AI going nuts right now? Looks like a real function. Is it running? Failed the build, not supported. Oh my God, it's still impossible to read. 
assert cannot be used like a method. I don't remember which library I saw that did something like this, but I'm guessing it's assert dot r equal. Yeah, okay, good. So that and five. All right, now we click run. So we get a bunch of warnings, but it, it passed. Yeah, great. So that works, but we can't use any Godot specific stuff. How does it look in the test explorer? Test explorer. Is the test explorer one of these things over here? Because I thought that was test results that I did. Did I lose the test explorer? <laughs> I, I could have sworn I had that when I looked at it earlier. I just need test results now. And I mean, th there are a bunch of check marks here. Active scene tree, scene tree data has not been requested. Uh, shouldn't that get the scene tree? Yeah, this gets it here. Although this doesn't know about the, um, the script that's attached, which seems a little unusual. Oh, maybe I didn't save it. Does it know now? Can you like reopen that? I don't know what's going on there. This profile has other C sharp extensions installed. Oh wait, oh my God. I wonder if changing profiles had, oh my God. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Ooh, thank you, yo. That's very important. Oh man, that was, that was silly. Okay, so now let's restart. Yeah, restart pretty much everything. And then now we should have the test explorer, right? Yes, there it is. Okay, great. And we can go directly to this. I bet now you don't have the run all test. I, nope, it's gone. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there's, there's probably a way to do that test in C sharp dev kit. Specifies whether the run and debug test code lens should be shown. It looks like it's checked. I don't know why that turned off then. Hmm, strange. All right, well, whatever. Uh, so what I want to test is how do you make a random number in C sharp in Godot? So Godot, C sharp, random number. There aren't any built-in rand functions in Godot shaders. I don't care about shaders. random number generator dot randomize gd dot rand i yeah so this is what i want to do i want to call this from over here return a random number so this should be valid this is uint okay fine we can turn that to a uint that's okay and this is going to break i'm guessing also the well the test will probably fail so we could just say assert this is greater than negative one. I mean, that's always true because it's an unsigned int and it probably knows that it's always true, but let's try running that. Click this button. I think this will fail though. It looks green, but I don't get how. Shouldn't this have not even run? I'm a little confused as to what's happening. I think it's rerunning the test. I just don't, yeah, I think it's rerunning the test. Uh, okay, I think this is working. How does this, how does this thing work? Returns a random unsigned 32-bit integer. Use remainder to obtain a random value in the integer zero n minus one. So n minus one. So we set this to percent one, it'll always be zero. Just want to make sure that we're like removing the randomness from this. Yeah, and if I were to set this to two, then half the time this test will fail. It ran and succeeded, succeeded, succeeded. This doesn't seem correct. Oh, maybe it's using the same seed every time. 
maybe I am not running what I think I'm running. If I run this plus one, what happens? Should should never be true. Okay, something's going wrong here. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Refresh. Yeah, it's not compiling. Uh, oh, did I do this again? Oh my god. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's put this back to this. So this should now finally build, I guess. Actual value should not be a constant. Are we running this or no? I'm just gonna run .NET build over here. Specify which project or solution to build because it contains more than one project or solution. Well, how did that happen? Was that in the source? Because I am very upside down right now. No, how did that get there? <laughs> how did I create this? <laughs> and a solution too. I don't know what even did that. This is 10 minutes ago. You think you left the old name and Godot created it? Okay. Um, so I got to undo that, I guess. RGGD unit. Project.Godot. Oh, man. Okay. So we got to... We got to go modify this. So that this is called, what, test systems? Except for, yeah, then we remove all the GD unit stuff. And then we try running .NET build. Build succeeded. Okay, now the test should fail. I, I don't get how it's not failing. Oh, I guess there's like a one out of five chance for it to not fail. No. This isn't doing anything. I think it's still not running. And I want colored output over here so I can actually tell what an error is and what a warning is. It was a terminal will be reused by task. Press any key to close it. I don't think this is a problem. I should rebuild. Didn't I build once already? Build succeeded. What? Oh, wait a second. Is... No. I don't follow what's going on. When you hit the double arrow, a rebuild is different than build. This is super confusing what's going on here. .NET test from the CLI. All right. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. We're just going to say check to see if 2 is equal to 100, which should always fail. So, yeah, that actually did fail. So why, when I call this testeroni function, does it not fail? Now it's failing, but I wonder if it's failing because it's got something cached from before and this just isn't building maybe? Expected value, actual value. I mean, I don't think this really matters. I just see warnings here. I don't I don't get it. Does it tell me what it thinks the error is? It doesn't even do that. I don't think this is the output. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty confused about this. Also, I kind of want to just delete these things if I, I don't want there to be errors all over the place or warnings even because otherwise it just gets confusing.
using directive is, yeah, sure. So if I say for this thing to return 100, declare a constant, and then can I just ignore this? Suppress. Ooh, that is probably not what I meant to do. I, I'll click this, but like, I just wanted to suppress this here. Suppress in source. There we go. All right, so warning should be gone. <laughs> it still has some warnings here. Line 10 of sample test. Single line comment should be preceded by a blank line. Oh man, stuff is obnoxious. Assert that actual dot is equal to. This is like the weirdest way of doing things, huh? I get this to build. I run the test. I don't think it's doing anything. I'm, I'm missing something, right? Like this is the, the function I should be able to run. So bizarre. Can you run from test explorer now? Is it green? Uh, it's green. Yeah. If I change this to 99, it fails. Okay. And then I, the, I mean, the real test is changing this. And yeah, this fails. I have a feeling it's not actually testing anything though. Like if I set this to two, it should pass some of the time. The whole thing I'm testing here, by the way, for anyone who's not clear about this, I wanted to see, can I test a function that uses a Godot function call in it? And it's possible this is working exactly as expected and it's just using the same seed every single time, in which case I would not actually be testing anything right now. Um, we could change the seed and I guess just try that out. So let's hit play there and see what happens. So if we just keep changing the seed, we will eventually find one where this works. Unfortunately, this is taking a very long time to find that one, huh? Yeah, one of these should output zero. <laughs> there's there's got to be one that does this. I try to debug. Yeah, that's a good point. Does it break in here? It doesn't even break in, huh? I wonder if it's because we can only break in for the actual test code and then maybe call into this test Roni function. Yeah, it just, it just fails here. Okay, so that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah, this crashes your tests. Yeah. Why isn't it clear that it's crashing though? And yeah, thank you for the suggestions. By the way, I know a bunch of people have been providing help and I've been kind of not giving out points. Uh, so Vorpal Thunder, there's a point for you. Yo, you helped me with my issue earlier. They're just interop with the engine. Yeah, so, all right. What this would mean is that there pretty much is no way to unit test Godot functions without Godot running. And that in itself is not even necessarily a problem. Like we could go back to the old test code that we had, which is probably gonna be broken now. My game name and just, yeah, I, I pretty thoroughly broke this, I think. So Something should have been in here that is okay. Let's just delete the whole thing then. RM, RF, my game name. 
write your systems in pure C sharp outside of Godot. Well, that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is just run your tests inside of Godot. And I think it's probably easier to write your, to run your tests using Godot. So yeah, two options, write pure C sharp and test that and test using Godot itself. And I'd opt for the latter so that the code doesn't get overly complex. They use some kind of mock render. Right, 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 right. I, I'm aware they're using Godot and that's why I'm saying it's not a problem because we could still run this on a CI machine. We just need there to be a window environment and that's okay. I wonder how quickly some of the tests would run. And I wonder if that's the best way of doing things. But um, I'm going to try this again. I should really take a break. All right, you know what we're going to do then? Fine, I'll take a break. But then when we come back, I want to run this again. And I want to figure out, because I, I think this is a better route to pursue here. So let's write this. Where I left off, try this again and see if it makes sense. Then try to set up the project with that as our testing mechanism. Because we can always add in unit tests for pure C sharp code where it makes sense. I just don't know how much pure C sharp code we're going to have. Like maybe look at idle ascendance and see how much we could have tested if it were C sharp instead of GD script. I suspect it's not very much. I know there's some stuff we could do and we could just add more static functions all over the place. Does not have Godot bindings and unit tests. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can do that. I just, I suspect for the game that like the way Godot has you do practically everything is the very top of your, your, your script, I guess, has to be like extends some Godot class. And in C sharp, this is not written out like this. It's written out like this. You have just it inherits from node 2D. And like that alone immediately stops you from ever being able to test this class from a unit test. You would have to run this in the engine, I'm pretty sure. So like now you need anything that would have been static in this class just needs to be moved as a static method in another class. And it's like, oh, now you're now you're splitting things just for the sake of testing. And it's, I don't know, it just feels like it's wrong for me. Yeah. Because you're good. Anyway, we'll, we'll finish that in a bit. Uh, I, did I write where we left off? Yeah. Spectrum. Okay. I'll be back. Is it jump time? <laughs> it's jump time.
Hey again, everybody. I see some first first place win, first second place win. Good job. Finally. <laughs> Congrats. All right, close the game. I want to get back to what we were doing here. So yeah, try this again. Let's go test this out. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna make a directory. Um, I'll just call this Godot game, I guess. Gonna run that. Gonna run that. Gonna run that, and then this. Okay, there is another problem that I need to figure out, which is how do I know that the test crashed? Like. This is this is a huge problem, right? Because it looked a bunch of times like it was passing. Maybe it's when you see this, but it doesn't say that it crashed, and it like it's got to know, right? Anyway, all right. So I used I just installed this, and now we go load that up. Output output. And then go to C sharp dev kit drop down. Is it this? I think maybe it's a different output in here. Maybe test explorer. Active test was aborted. Reason test host process crash. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is. I feel like the UI should tell you, right? Like if you have this test explorer and you don't see that it crashed, it was like what I was doing earlier is this. I had like a zero here and I hit the play button and it's green, of course, zero is equal to zero. Okay, great. Now I hit the play button again and it just looks like it passes. Like that, that's that gotta just be a bug, right? You can click show output. Test run to now recording the output. Yeah, this is this is just this this is really, really bad. Because if you think your test passed, there's no reason why you'd go look into like, well, was there an error? You would just expect a failure mark here. Uh, there has to be a bug in that thing, right? C sharp dev kit. I mean, maybe that's why it has so few stars. Where's their GitHub? They usually have a GitHub link somewhere, right? Maybe it's not public. Oh, here we go. Issues. Yeah. All right. Abort. Test Explorer cancel. Do not propagate to test adapter. Completely broken. Nothing works. <laughs> oh, man. Missing feedback when test host crashes. Yeah. Yeah, this is the issue, right? You should see a dot next to tests, not like a check mark. But I don't, right? I, I mean, like, this is clearly crashing here. If we go to output and then go to test explorer and just clear this, and I hit the play button here. It, I guess we need to go back to that. Yeah, it says active test run was aborted, and yet we see green check marks everywhere. The right side. I mean, I see that that red dot was a breakpoint, but like there's still a check mark even here. Is <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a bug here. I think it's this that somebody's commenting on. Wait, click the test results tab. I mean, here, I'll turn off my camera so you can actually see what, what we're looking at here. I mean, even if this, even if this is correct, whatever we're looking at, can I close this or? Hmm. Interesting. Now it's all dots. What did I, how did I do that? I clicked this button. What does this do? What does this do? 
I think it just gets rid of the test run. I set this to zero, I hit play. Then I set this to a thing that's gonna crash and I hit play. Yeah, okay, so what I'm getting at is like, that is 100% a bug. But the way I guess I can fix it is by looking in this tab and then clicking this button. This shows me that I ran no tests, right? But the problem is that you wouldn't know that if you just looked over at the test explorer over here or even the check mark that you clicked. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is like, I would need to know to always look at the test results tab instead of the UIs that are way more in your face over here. Like you can just click this and have it run. And now it looks like it succeeded, but it really didn't. Yeah. I should probably just record a record a video for this. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but it's something I'll have to figure out or just always run them from the command line or something. But I, I have a feeling whatever. Okay, so let's go back into this. We've got the close out all these things. Calic, thanks for resubbing. We're also at 27 months. I think Smoo and Freak Technic both were. I'm not sure. Wonder what happened 27, well, not 27 months in the past, but whenever everyone started subscribing, <laughs> I get no test when it crashes, but you get the check mark. Yeah, I don't know what's causing that either. What operating system are you using, Darkstorm? It's a good question for me to know in general, even regardless of what's happening here. Okay, so we're going to open up this and we are going to get these tests. And I think we can just go to. First of all, which profile are we on? Yeah, we're on the wrong one. <laughs> all right. No tests have been found in this workspace yet. I think we need to go, ooh, wait, what happened? What did happen here? Oh, right, the launch task needs to have Godot 4 in it, right? There. Now we should see these tasks. Yeah, so debug tests, debug current scene, debug current tests. How do you just run the tests, I guess? I guess it's pretty much the same as debugging. Oh, no, not in C Sharp, right? C Sharp should add more of an overhead for uh, running tests. I messed that up. Yeah, nice. Windows. Okay, yeah. Must be a Mac issue then. I wonder if that person who filed the issue was also on Mac. System info. No, Linux. I guess it's just not a problem on, on Windows. Or maybe it's an ARM issue somehow. Okay, so the thing I was talking about earlier, let's go back to the idle sentence code base, open this up, and I wanted to just kind of show any arbitrary code that I had here. So let's go to battle character. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, yeah. Anyway, battle character. So here is a bunch of code. Now, let's look at any function like this. Get power, returns a float, looks in character data. Character data itself, is oh just data okay i mean this would work <laughs> so this part's all fine uh battle character wouldn't by the way because it extends from node so we wouldn't be able to test any of this we'd just be able to test the code underneath it and presumably there's something it does here that requires it to use a node get child well there's adding a sprite i guess we could self-contain some of this well thanks Rami. are you feeling better Rami? So maybe this isn't the issue you're trying to solve. It wasn't that the output has a problem. It was that the like test explorer UI has a problem. Yeah. Still coughing a lot. Rest is gone. That's good. 
Also, I feel like there's some solace in known sickness symptoms. It's when you have weird ones that you've never felt before that it's worrisome. Went moldering for two hours, <laughs> maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I hope you're not contagious either. I mean, that's not probably a great decision just for yourself, but then you could be passing this on to other people. Maybe it's a bouldering virus. Maybe it makes you want to go boulder bouldering. So, yeah, I mentioned these couple of ways of testing. Uh, testing just pure C-sharp code. And we'll probably have some of this anyway and then testing Godot scenes. And I'm just thinking, how much should we try to do to keep these things separate? And I, I just think we're gonna just go with this route. I am also curious, someone mentioned that Unity testing, C-sharp testing, unit testing. Difficult to ensure a change in one part of your code doesn't break things somewhere else. Automated testing helps you do it. Unity test framework. Allows you to test your code in both edit mode and play mode. Wow, that's actually a pretty interesting idea, testing in edit mode. So you can make a test pass. But this sounds like it needs the editor. Right? Shipped with the Unity editor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this is what they were saying. Um, let me think about this. What would it mean? What would it mean if you didn't have this? I guess there's a bunch of stuff that you'd need to just mock from the Godot framework. And what's the point in doing that? Yeah, okay. Is Skella Seller the definitive name? How is it pronounced and where did it come from? Uh, I just came up with a name and yes, it should be the definitive name. And where it came from is this storyline that you can see here or in the FAQ. It's pretty short. Did I check out GD Unit 4? I didn't personally check it out. Let me see. Oh, I actually just submitted a change to this repo yesterday. No, not this repo, a different repo. Something very similar, I guess. Time for testing GD scripts, C sharp scripts, and scenes in the Godot editor. Oh, I think this is something that puts, this is like an extension for Godot itself, right? That lets you run tests from inside Godot. Oh, I read it more like, what was your muse? Did it just pop, in my, pop into my head? It just popped into my head, I think. I I have a, I have a scratch pad here where I was thinking about names and I came up with a bunch of dumb ones. Where did this go? Here it is. Yeah. So I said, just going to write down a bunch of stupid names and see what I think. I kind of liked Explorium Emporium. <laughs> and then I had a bunch of other ones. I was kind of leaning toward Loot Tycoon. And then I wrote down Skeleteller, and I wrote, if you were a skeleton, I guess. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot of all this. I just get editor errors on my side. Hate the plugin management. Well, okay. If I'm understanding this correctly, GD Unit 4 is just for running tests from Godot, right? and in Godot, but I think it's the from part that's important. And then this, this chicken soft thing, chicken soft is running outside of Godot. Well, running from outside of Godot, but then using the engine. They also have a test adapter. So you should be able to run outside Godot. Okay, interesting. Because I was gonna say, if it's just if it's just the from Godot part, then I don't think it's gonna help too much. But running outside of Godot is, I think that's really all I care about. Just get editor errors though. Like, is it worth me trying this? I don't know. I, I'm I'm more inclined to try this chicken soft thing. Well, you just install a plugin. Okay, yeah, I guess we can give it a shot. All right, so how do you install this? Oh, wait, it doesn't even support the newest. Oh, it does, it does. Okay, and I'm on that version, right? How do we even see the version? I should be on 421, yes. Cool. 
No C sharp only unit test to touch Godot code without extra stuff. Yeah. I'm guessing this has been open forever. Yeah. I think I even found this thread. And just to be clear, those in the Unity world, Unity hasn't come up with some like super elegant solution for this, right? It's just, hey, run the engine. Command line tool for running outside. I got to say, the nice thing about the chicken soft thing is it's already kind of just set up. What am I looking for? Just seeing what people do for tests and other game engines. So in Godot, you need to have the engine running to get to, to test anything Godot related. Obviously, if it's just pure code like C sharp, you don't need an engine running for that. But yeah, for anything that inherits from node duty even there, blam, you just can't even test it without having the engine running. Uh, and it's not a problem. I just, I'm curious, is this like par for the course with other mature editors? Or engines, I mean. Uh, how to install. To install it from asset lib, open asset lib, type gd unit for, and then activate the plugin. Does this link not work? It doesn't. Oh, it's now activating the plugin. And this link is to activate the plugin. <laughs> Should really submit a, an issue fix for that. All right, so to activate it, follow these steps. Go to plugins, enable. Once activated, it'll be displayed. Then you get an inspector. Okay, I mean, let's go try it out, right? Why not? Yeah, the docs do seem pretty messy. Uh, I don't know how you get um, plugins. Oh, and that also doesn't work. Asset library, there it is, yeah. All right, so now we're going to search for GD unit 4. There it is. I did not, I didn't mean to click the tools thing. All right, download. Ready to install. What? Change install folder, where is it installing? And oh, you install plugins directly to your project? Interesting, I guess, sure. This might not have been a smart idea because I should probably have made a new project for this. All right, installed successfully. Now go over to plugins and enable it. And now we have GD unit. Uh, okay. How do I expand this? What is going on? How is there an update? Why wouldn't the asset store just have the update in it? Okay, I guess, update. I mean, there are errors here. I wonder how this collects your tests. Cause like, maybe we could just add a test and see if this is working. How do you, how do you annotate your test? VS test adapter support. Is this uh, another thing I have to install? I'm not sure if it's just built in. Basic test example. Extends GD unit test suite. Okay, I see. So we need to make a custom script that does this. So this, instead of being, no, no, no. We should just have a new type of thing, right? I don't know how it picks these things up. Like if I make a 2D scene and then change a type, do I get like a unit test suite? I do. Well, I get something here. I don't know what this is. Unit test suite. 
main class for all GD unit test suites. This class is the main class to implement your unit test. You have to extend and implement your test case as described. Okay, I guess, but this says GD on it. Is there not a way to do this with C sharp? I, I don't know. <laughs> yep, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Maybe it forces you to write your tests in GD script. That doesn't sound right. Also, wow, what is this? What is this doing? It said before you install and you installed it. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I probably should give this a. Man, I don't think it said before you install. Just said open asset lib in the search bar, type this, select it, click on download, and then activate the plugin using these steps. And these steps are down here. Open your project settings and click enable. Yeah. Maybe the before you install is over here. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm not totally sure how this works. Is this even like my script or is this in the add-ons? It's in the add-ons thing. I'm inside the Godot extension window. Yeah, that I probably totally missed. Before you install, you have to disable the plugin and delete. Deactivate the plugin if you have it installed. Okay, I didn't have any of this. I mean, maybe we still need to restart Godot. Can I not attach a script to this now? Oh, I see. We can. All right. So then we go to call this like test GD whatever. <laughs> I don't know. So now this inherits from Node. It shouldn't. It should inherit from like GD unit something something. I, I don't know what I'm doing. GD unit test suite. Is it like that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think this is really worth trying to figure out. I think the chicken soft thing will just work. C sharp support advice. Please note that running C sharp tests is only supported with this version 4.2 or higher. Yeah, I have that at least one Godot mono. Yeah, I have that too. How to enable set up your project under property group, change target framework to .NET, add lang version, copy this stuff. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't think this is worthwhile to look into anymore. I think I'd rather have this all just be outside the editor. Plus, when it's managed by the .NET package system, I, I feel like it's just easier. So, all right. How do we get back to something that makes sense? <laughs> also, I want to take a look. C-sharp run versus debug performance impact. Debug versus release. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I know there's the adapter and everything. I just, I just don't see much of a need for this. Like, if we already have something that works, why not just use the thing that works? And it's easy. And I don't know where I put it. Here it is. Yeah, so I guess we close out of this. Um, yeah. All right. So let's write it in here then. Not this one, this one development philosophy tests only write tests for important code. Typically anywhere that we've found a bug that way we make sure that we don't regress. And uh, at least at first, don't take any special measures to make the code fully testable outside of Godot. 
well, in like in pure C sharp. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I see. You're saying using NuGet, I could, I could have gotten this to work anyway. Well, still, I think I'm inclined to use the chicken soft stuff. Although maybe that's a mistake. Maybe they're both using the same thing underneath anyway. Where's the chicken soft library? Here. What does this use? I guess we could just find out what it uses by looking at its CS project file, huh? This isn't the right thing. Go dot test. Oh, it's its own library, right? Yeah, this. Run test from command line, collect code coverage, debug tests. I wonder what this does. Like, what is this doing? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think this is good. Oh man, where did I leave off with this? Oh yeah, I wanted to see, Actually, I guess we don't need anything special here. We have debug game, debug current scene, debug test, debug current test. I think this is all fine. Do we have any tests we must, right? Does this show them in a nice way? Where do we see the results of those? It wouldn't put them there. Where do we get the results? <clears throat> oh yeah, it's a real thing. How do we run this from the command line? Game is running a release build. Main will just immediately change scene to game. The game is running in debug mode. Game will switch to the testing scene. We're editing, editing game over main. Uh, okay. File name meshes. Yeah, I guess the other thing too in launch that Jason we could customize eventually is whether we're debugging. Like, is there any actual debug thing that happens here? I don't think so. Also, we can tell how we run this, I guess, just like this, right? We're just launching Godot with these things run tests and quit on finish. So, we should just be able to do that from the command line itself. So let's go to edit. No, we don't even need to do that. We can just do echo Godot 4. There it is. Okay, so we run that with dash dash run test dash dash quit on finish. And then specify the path to this, maybe? No, we probably need a project file, right? Whoops. Project .godot. Does that work? No, that's a bad thing. I've done a bad thing. <laughs> uh, close that. Maybe I just want the directory? No, that didn't work either. Hey, Aramis. Welcome in, and hey, Raiders. I am struggling to figure out... <laughs> How are we supposed to run this test for Godot from the command line? And I see that you must all be Godot fans. So yeah, welcome in. We're making a game called Skella Seller, which is something I've been designing over a little bit of time, not, not terribly long. We started about a little over a month ago and it started as a game called Idle Ascendance. 
and that game is playable on itch if anyone's interested i don't recommend playing it it was a prototype where i cut every corner i possibly could and we got to the point where the game worked and so you have a character that you can move around in this world and you get into battles and it started with manual controls so you actually like click the skill to use it but then as you level up you get this automation skill and eventually battles are just running themselves so for Skella Seller, I took that idea of, hey, you're battling and everything and added another system on top of it, which is that you're selling items in a town. So we have just literally today started the GitHub repo for this. And I'm just trying to figure out how testing should work. Time to read the document. Yeah, the document explains everything. Essentially, you're an adventurer who was fighting a snake and you died to poison damage because you couldn't buy an antidote. And so you come back as a skeleton and decide that no one else should ever suffer that same fate. So you start up a shop. You become a skeleton seller. So yeah, so this must have a way of running. And I don't know how we do this. I guess the same general way that I ran Jump Royale. So we go to here and then main.py and then figure out what the Godot command was. It was dash dash path. Okay, that's what I must be missing here. So, <clears throat> and then is there anything else? No, it's just a path to a directory that contains a file. Oh, there, there we go. That worked. Did that pass? I can't tell. Yeah, it passed one. Godot quit unexpectedly. Oh, it was expected for me. It must be because it started and then closed pretty quickly. Oh, this said program crashed with signal 11. What does that mean? Yeah, what is this? I think it's intentionally being crashed by the test framework. We could just check that by searching for quit on finish and that chicken soft thing. By the way, Aramis, what are you working on? I didn't mean to completely get back to my task. I do appreciate the raid. <laughs> All right, we're going to find it over here probably somewhere. Yeah, here it is in the README. Quit on finish flag. All right, how? What does this do when it quits? Quit on finish equals value. Okay, so now we search for that. Test environment also has quit on finish, so now we go search for that. There it is in test environment. If env dot quit on finish exit code equals had error one or zero. Okay, so it should be exiting. There's coverage is not true, so it should just be on exit. It should just exit with an error code of zero. I don't know why I got a code of 11 then. Or signal 11. Is it, do I just need to like take my hands off the keyboard? Every once in a while that happens and it's not because I pressed anything. Huh. I don't understand that. Yeah, it's breaking a pretty decent amount. It says test passed and then just can't close. And yeah, now that's all it's doing. I don't know. Maybe this is inside the chicken soft thing. I'd love to just move on from this. <laughs> Would absolutely love it. <laughs> but what are you going to do? All right, where's chicken soft? Here we go. Where are your issues? Are other people running into this? I'll just search for this. Working on a game where you mine resources from a cave to craft gear, which you can then use yourself or sell to NPC characters. Oh, also a selling related game. Are you playing as a skeleton by any chance? <laughs> what is this that's going on? This is a closed issue, so hopefully there's an answer here. Marked as completed. No skeleton? Okay, well, it's still cool. How far along are you? As described, on Godot shutting down is called be after getting rid of all script bindings. Deleting an object also deletes other objects that later are later in the queue of managed objects to delete. Hmm. This was not super long ago. 
like six months ago. Hmm. Yeah. Well, sell that whole thing. I want to, I want to have like a sell a ton achievement. I want to add that in. Or maybe you hire someone whose name is Skeleton. The Skeleton. Okay, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. I wonder if something else is running somewhere and I'm just not even aware that it's running. But I don't think so. You have Skeleton. <laughs> the Stellar Skeleton. It worked from there. What did this what did this launch with? It's debug tests. Debug test is this one and had run tests and quit on finish. There's also a pre-launch task of build, I guess. I'm not doing that. Stop at entry false. Yeah, I don't see anything different. Huh. Strange. Finish the prototype and exploration. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're at very similar points in our game dev journeys for this our particular games someone else ran an issue here or signal 11 that is something else any issues here running from godot editor is fine as soon as i try to run exported project okay i mean i guess this is the same issue i'm encountering i'll just thumbs up the original thing Well, that's kind of sucky, right? Because this error prevents it from closing. <laughs> Wait, will it close eventually if I just leave this? I don't think so, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I wonder how hard it would be to get this to run on my mini PC. Because I could just write something that'll like upload code to the mini PC and then run it there. Both of them run on Mac too, Mac only issue. Could be. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe, how about we write some, some notes about this stuff? So did I write anything about testing? Nope. Well, we're gonna write something about testing. Testing, so. I believe Yo shared an issue and said, maybe you'll use this for your notes. And now I will use this for my notes. So there's been an issue open since 2020. About testing in Godot, at least for C sharp. In general, these are true as of today. So if you want to test something that involves only C sharp, just use any unit testing library. If you want to test something that involves any Godot specific code, you need Godot to be running. And I'll just link to, yeah, um, there are lots of options for this sort of thing. Some that run in Godot itself as a plugin, some that run outside of Godot or in VS Code. Uh, the chicken soft solution or I guess like on Mac OS, I hit this issue where the engine crashes after running the code from the command line. <sighs> what if I just didn't have quit on finish? What if we deleted that? Yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't crash. <laughs> because it's not trying to not trying to close the program. 
Yeah, and if I quit this, I guess it would be fine. Yeah. I can work around that by getting rid of dash dash quit on finish and just manually quitting. Yeah. Yeah, I switched to Obsidian, oh, I guess it's been about four months. Wow. I was going to say not that long ago, but it's a little bit longer than not that long ago. All right, so let's link to a couple of these things now. So GD unit four. E, G, G, D. How do they capitalize it? Lowercase G, D. Yeah. Suddenly run outside of Godot. So that's like the chicken soft thing. So this is just setting up a template that uses these two things. And what are these two things? C sharp test runner for Godot. And then this library provides an API that simplifies writing integration tests. Yeah. So on Mac OS, I had this issue. So I decided to use the chicken soft stuff from here for my C sharp game. So to use cloud storage. So by default, it just saves files to disk. So if you go and look at this one, for example, reveal and finder, you see there's just a bunch of MD files. And so what then I use on top of that is sync thing. And that way it syncs it between all of my different computers which I can show you. Yeah, this. So I have, I have these three computers, my Chromebook, I have a mini PC that's always running. And then my phone as well has sync thing running. And so that way I have my notes everywhere. And then I publish to notes.adamlearns.com and this uses Astro. Wait, it's your birthday? <laughs> Did I read that right? If so, happy birthday. <laughs> so am I, am I happy with this realm of what's going on here? Also, how did I run before C sharp and Godot? This was debugging. I don't know how I ran, but I, I think all of these build before doing anything. Pre-launch task, build, 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 yeah. Oh, I switched on your birthday. Oh, I see, okay, gotcha. Ah, now I know. <laughs> yeah, so then the question would be, how do we, how do we set all this up for the the real game and i guess let's go back to that yeah i want to i want to actually get this set up what's my to-do list yeah so get the testing library set up for uh for skeleton and so we need a folder slash project for the game, a folder slash project for the integration tests, and then a folder project for unit tests. Leave this to Darkstorm probably. Yeah. Yeah, I like Obsidian a lot. I, I think it's been nice. And there are a couple things that are, I guess, a little bit lacking for me. I did a whole video on Obsidian, but the short story is I'm still using OneNote for password protected notes. I want to find a solution that's just as good as OneNote was for that. But I just haven't yet. I haven't looked into it too much. And I'm trying to avoid using plugins pretty much ever. So <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm just waiting for Obsidian to do something and they probably won't. This always happens, by the way, every time I start a new repo. I'm always like, yeah, we're going to get going and we're going to write code, <laughs> but we're not. And I actually had my expectations set correctly this time.
Okay. So let's look at this one more time. Oh, we need that. We need that command in there, don't we? Yeah. Maybe modify the readme to add this command. Yeah, the other thing, so Darkstorm, do you do you have a Godot 4 environment variable? I guess it doesn't matter if you do. You could have set this up for yourself. Yeah, so never mind. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I should write that in the in the readme for that as well. Modify readme. So add this command and then add the setup information for launch.json which would go in the VS code folder. Now, why was that not a problem over in the chicken soft repo? Is it because it wasn't in a Git repo? No, that's not possible, is it? Where is, there's VS code. So FF launch doesn't find it. Oh, it's not an issue because I just launched it through here. Okay, well, that, that explains that. <laughs> not sure if I'll stick with it or not, but it's been useful. I think if anything's been working for you, it's totally fine. You should still use it. For me, I'd been using OneNote for a long time. I mean, I guess I did a whole video on this, so I'll I'll just sum it up. But if you want to find out the full thoughts, there's the video. I've been using OneNote for a very long time. And then certain things just started bothering me to no end. And I, I don't ever see them getting fixed. Oh, you did watch a video. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But anyway, so the reason I had said all this stuff, and I was going to sum it up anyway, was that switching away when you've been using a program forever can be really, really tough. And yet if you're using Markdown, then it should not be very tough because there are automatic tools for converting. But like Notion, for example, I don't know how hard it would be to switch from Notion to Markdown because maybe Notion does something, maybe Obsidian does something, but you need one of those parties to do something or else you're in for a world of pain. <laughs> So far, I noticed that if you access static members, tests don't crash. Any new object instance immediately crashes. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. So it's okay if you, oh yeah, and I knew this too because I was calling a test testeroni function. Yeah. I think th the way I'm kind of looking at this is, uh, I don't think we're gonna get ourselves into an untestable mess. And yet I don't think we're gonna have 100% test coverage. So I think that I think there will be a balance that we strike. And for a game that should be done in hopefully about six months. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping it's not a big problem. Hey, Travic, thanks for the resub. Why the rebrand of the game? The rebrand came from uh, like new systems in the game. So originally the game was called Idle Ascendance and the problem was with this word idle. I think it communicates the wrong things even if it's an automated game. And so I wanted some new title. Also, there was no ascending in the game. <laughs> so really, the title made no sense <laughs> whatsoever. So there needed to be a new title. And at the same time, there needed to be a new system because all the old game had was just battling. And it was kind of just battling for no real reason. It was battling to do more battles. And I got feedback from a few people saying like, all right, well, what am I doing to control the game? And I'm like, that's it. That's you. You're watching it. <laughs> so now I think it's going to be a little bit different. And with the new system, with the change in title, we needed the new title to make sense. And I think Skella Seller is catchier than something like Loot Tycoon. Characters could technically ascend. Yeah. Maybe, but there was no way for them to do that, really. All right, so I know I'm just going through tabs again. I'm, I'm like very slowly making progress here. I think I'm going to use this to make a new game. And I think we're going to actually set this up correctly. Where did that author information go? Because I ran some command that they gave me and it literally had my name in here. Where does my name go? My name. Authors, company. And what makes a csproj.old file? That's also concerning to me. I have a feeling that this made it the chicken soft thing. 
I don't even know how we'd find it exactly because they probably append old so that I can't just search for CS project old. Whoopsie. Can I like, can I put regex here? Maybe I can, and maybe it's just not found. It could be somewhere else in here. It could be something that, I don't know, who knows what does this. And it doesn't really matter. I guess I would just delete that. I don't know what we even put for name though. I guess for company, I could fill that out. But for authors, I guess we want multiple tags there. I don't know. I, I don't really, it's not, it's not super important. Oh, it also adds a license file and the license file has copyright 2023. Very interesting. That means that this repo probably, no, it's probably been updated and they probably just haven't caught that. Ideally, they dynamically pulled a year in instead of me just manually updating a file to 2024. Is this what I want? Yeah. Okay, so now just close out of all these other tabs. <laughs> Getting sick of this. All right, for the game, for integration tests, and use that for this. Oh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to clear my head a little bit. And then we're going to set up this structure, and then we should be able to start writing the scene manager. I don't think we'll get very far because I've already been streaming for a pretty long time today. So, yeah, we'll see. But I'll be back in a little bit. Is it jump time? It's jump time. For those who've never seen this game, just type join right now, no need for an exclamation mark, and then the commands are right here. That's all you need is J and a number. That's all you need to know. To figure the rest out. I'll be back in a bit.
let's stop and take a moment and just think of how amazing it is that we can code anything. <laughs> you know, every once in a while you get stuck on something and you sort of lose sight of the bigger picture. And I don't, I'm not even like frustrated or anything really. I think there were some frustrations earlier, but it's not like I'm mad now. And I am very motivated to work on this project. And I just, it's, it's cool that we can even do any of this. So yeah, so close the game. <clears throat> yeah, let's think about how awesome Jump Royale is. <laughs> All right, so let's try not poisoning the code base here. And so let's test this and we'll be very careful about this. We had been in the Godot game folder and it made a my game name thing underneath. So we're going to be in Skella Cellar. And how do we want this to be laid out? Because we got to plan this. I want an integration test, or I guess like Godot test, maybe we say, and then maybe just tests, and then the actual project, which I guess we should call Skella Cellar, but maybe we call it game. What is this Skella Cellar thing about? Check out the Skell command. I want to see if it gets me. Did it hear me? It didn't hear me. Yeah, okay. Well, you got it anyway. <laughs> but it was supposed to do that automatically. <laughs> so does this make sense? I mean, I guess so. Whatever. If it doesn't make sense, then we can always just rename stuff, right? So let's go get that to work. Also, check out that sweet blue color we get. So every time I go to that directory, it's just going to change the tab to Skella Cellar and make it electric blue. I love it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to run that command over here. So do we run all our .NET stuff from the beginning? We probably do, or from the root repo. Uh, install, yeah. Oh, this is deprecated? Interesting. All right, generate a new project based on this template. So we're calling this, oh, wait a second, no. Wait, wait, wait what am I doing? This is actually going to make the game. Let's go back to temp and then test chickens and Godot game. What did it create under here? It created one folder. And in that one folder, there happened to be a test folder. I'm missing something. I thought there were two CS proj files. There's only one. How did they get it to work with only one? And does this make a get ignore? It does. And they ignore what coverage and everything? Yeah. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to do here? There's our actual Godot project. And they found a way to do this such that you don't need a separate test folder. And then they wrote the test right into there. Is that what I was seeing with the whole button count thing? I am probably not in the right folder for this. What is it called? Test button updates counter. Yeah, it's in the test folder. It's a little confusing. Yeah, I think this will work, but I think I think it'll all be fine. And we'll just have a separate project for the unit tests. And I think that makes sense too. I kind of want this to be in a completely different area of the game though. And maybe we could get that to work. Game equals default. I don't even know what this syntax is. Default exclamation mark. Huh, C sharp default. What is this? Oh, it okay. I guess what this is assert that it's not um, that it's not null, maybe. But then what is default in this case? Is this doesn't look genericized. It's actually create a game project or a test project. It creates just one project that happens to be both. 
So like you can see there is a solution here. There's a CS proj. I know my camera's covering a little bit of it. There's a solution, there's a CS proj, and then there's the project.cado file, and then they have, yeah, scenes and game code in source, and then test code in test source. So a little bit, a little bit unusual. And I guess this is supposed to represent the root of your repo, which I don't want to do. Oh man. I don't even plan on, also I wouldn't use default, just explicitly type null. Oh, default is the default of the type that you have here. That's very interesting. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't know that. <clears throat> All right. I'm still, I'm still torn here because I'm like, I'm not even going to be writing an integration test. So I'm setting up this library just to not be used at first, but in the hopes that we do eventually use it, but I don't like their setup that they have. So I would need to unravel what they've done here. It's like, what is this C spell thing? I'm guessing this is for spell check. It's gonna be so much. There's gonna be formatting and everything that we need to. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a bad idea to use this thing. I think we should probably just use this and set this up. Find the latest version of this. Add the version of your CS proj file. Example below shows how unit tests are written. Each test extends the provided test class and receives the test scene as a constructor argument. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. And I think we should stick with what I had originally as a setup. Uh, this structure here. Won't mind your obnoxious analyzers from Jump Royale. I think I'm going to probably end up changing the ones that get frustrating that I think maybe won't provide as much value. Because I think we should do sensible things. And this is part of the whole like balance code speed with code correctness. And a lot of them are totally fine, right? Like, I don't have an issue with a bunch of different analyzers. I think there are things like, you know, put a blank line before a comment or something. It's like things like that. I, I might find frustrating and just delete, but I'm going to keep an eye on that as I code. Uh, so yeah, if we're going to have this structure, then I guess I should just go make a solution and have a CS proj inside there and start making scenes and stuff. So I think that's what I want to do. And I think making it a game directory is, is reasonable. Do people have conventions for C sharp folder names, folder conventions? And what do we do for jump royale as well? I think we just use camel case. Yeah, there was jump royale in here. Then it got a little weird, I guess. <laughs> like test was capitalized. And a lot of these were capitalized too. Okay. Well, let's make the game folder. And then in here, we'll make a new project. So get CD and go and make it over here. Quit to project list. Don't save. <clears throat> so new project. Did I already make one <laughs> i don't think so no i didn't or maybe i did and i never saved anything i don't think that's even the case though so path should be here and i don't want to create a folder but i don't want the project name to be game <laughs> is there a way to change that test oh yeah there is okay cool so scala seller All right, then get, I think I want to set this to none. Let's just create it and see what it does. 
So now there should be a git ignore in here. There is. And what's inside of it? Just docado. And what's inside the one that's one level up? Also docado. And then a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, so just remove this one. Then I also want, I want any max stuff that should be in here. I'm just going to copy paste this. You have to change it because Docker Do will now be inside a uh, game. I have to change what? Isn't this what we want? Okay, dot, 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 get ignore. So this is all the Mac stuff. I don't want all of this. Oh, has to end in two new lines. Interesting. Assuming the project Docado is in game, which I think it should be. I am not totally sure what you're saying. I, I think I think this structure should be fine for what we have. Uh, I guess it all depends on how we form this, but this should ignore any folder named .godot, even if it's not in the current directory. All right, so we have the project now. Check JR structure. Yeah, we have... We have just a get ignore in the root, right? Yeah. Yeah, this should be fine. I don't think this line actually is needed. Yeah. Okay, next up, we're also going to need a couple things. Is there anything Windows specific for this? Thumbs.db and whatever. Yeah, sure. Everything below this line was created by dot get ignore or uh, what is it? Get ignore dot io. Yeah. All right. And then the other thing is docker do is created next to project docker do. I, I think I know what you're saying, but I, I'm not sure that's how this works. Like if I delete this line, and then do a do this thing, get repository found. Yeah, I gotta do this, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't actually change anything. So what I would need to do, let me show you what I mean, because that was probably a little bit fast. Um, this is automatically part of this, because this is saying ignore every folder that has .godot as its name. So it doesn't actually matter the pathing of it. But if I get rid of this now, watch what happens over on the left side. We should see a whole bunch of folders get spewed in there. And so if I had the second line, it would also ignore that folder, but I don't need it because I have the first line. So that's what I was trying to get at here. And so yeah, this line can just be deleted safely, although it doesn't really matter if we delete it or not. It's okay to have it. So I'm not gonna like make a change to jump royale. <clears throat> uh what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was gonna look up one other get ignore, which is for darn it, there's something here. Oh, what is it? <laughs> I don't remember. There's Godot, there's Mac, there's Windows. There's something else I wanted to ignore though. I don't remember what it was anymore. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Pivoting to a new prototype. Uh, sort of pivoting to the final game for this, but really it's not that we're just going to produce the game with no feedback from any users. So we're going to aim for checkpoint number one being either like about a month from now or two months from now, something like that. But I'm taking vacation in between one and two months from now. So they're kind of the same day <laughs> if you think about it that way <laughs> in terms of development, at least from my perspective. 
Uh, yeah, I don't remember what the other thing I was going to do. Uh, all right, so we have the Godot project. And this has nothing in it yet. We're going to want folders here for things like assets, uh, scenes. And I guess, do we want to capitalize all this stuff? I don't know why I'm so torn on this. We can always just rename it later. Plan anything special? Yeah, I haven't shared it publicly, though. So I, I want to ask my wife how comfortable she is with me sharing this stuff. Is this a derivative? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah, it comes from idle ascendance. Yeah. All right, assets. I'm going to make the usual stuff that we have here. I guess I guess I really don't like this if we're going to have a capitalized source directory like that. So I guess we're going to already rename this. <laughs> New assets, scene, scene script. I like having a source folder, and it just looks weird to have it capitalized. So I wonder if I want to make everything lowercase. Assets. I know none of this really matters. All right, we'll 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 merge it. We'll do a combination of our two ways. We'll capitalize this and capitalize this, but we'll leave it as source and not um, not scene scripts, and then make their scenes. Okay, now move icon.svg. Does this exist anywhere? Icon. It is in product .ado. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm gonna move this. Icon dot star to assets. Hey sec. Maybe you want a folder for exports. I think anything that would be exported, I would just be get ignoring anyway. So I'll just wait until I have it. You're prototyping again because it's far enough from the original idea. Not quite. So the original prototype, the entire design philosophy was like cut all the corners possible. Don't make things finalized. Don't even write good code. This time around, the goal is going to be to write good code for everything except for unproven systems. So like, let's say we want to test out, I don't know, something totally new. We might also prototype that. And I'm not totally sure, but the way I'm kind of thinking about it is for the first checkpoint that we have, and by the way, checkpoints are things that I release to people like you in the stream. For the first checkpoint, I'm thinking we do the like thinnest surface of all systems or like most systems, which mostly means like the town in selling and battling. Is it the same type of game? Uh, sort of, yeah. It's still going to be all the auto battling stuff. Let me show you the scene that I had here. So all the auto battling stuff. This does not work. I need to click this. Is going to still be in the game. It'll take place on the bottom of the screen. So I know I'm covering part of this, but the bottom is divided into thirds. So you'll have three different dungeons you can have open at a time. And these will be battles that just automatically play out like they used to. But by winning these battles, you're going to get tons and tons of items and they'll go into your town where you sell them. So here we have three potions out for display. Like you could imagine that I just got these three potions by beating one of these dungeons. And you'll have other shops here too, like a blacksmith and, a, and an armor smith. And you'll see swords out here and armors out here and something else, spell books out here. And you'll see customers just wandering around and going and buying this stuff as they have money. And then with that money, you'll upgrade your town. You'll get better stuff. You'll you know level up your adventures. Has the same name with script suffix for less confusion. Jumper scene, note is jumper. Was that something that existed over here? Because I think separating these is what I would probably do. I don't think it matters too much to have the scenes next to the scripts, but it doesn't make a huge difference, I guess. We could just, just make a scenes directory and put the script right in there. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. These are all ones that do not inherit from some Godot thing, but these all inherit from some Godot thing, right? Yeah, Node 2D. Yeah, I see, I see. Um, Yeah, I'm fine with that. I think it's reasonable enough. 
I'm already putting in more time than I should be into this stuff. I think we should still have like a somewhat cut corners thing. Uh, so make their scene scripts. All right, now let's go make a very, very basic first scene. We're going to call this title screen and we're going to add in a label and just say, this is the title screen. All right, now save this under here, title screen. All right, and then let's attach a script, not that we even need a script for this. And it's gonna be source scene scripts, title screen, except for all this is in C sharp. It's gotta be a way to make that be the default, right? I think so. So probably have to change the templates. I think this is fine. I think it's reasonable enough. So here we're going to say get label text equals this is the title screen, which is what the thing already says, except for we added an exclamation mark, which makes it exciting and new. Let me delete all this stuff, delete this, delete that. Cool. All right, so we're gonna just run this. It'll have an exclamation mark after it. Yeah. So this proves that we have a project set up at least. <laughs> Somehow we have an error, even out of that. Error opening, oh yeah, I forgot to change that. I wonder how it, uh, it's in config slash icon. So there must be an icon here. Yeah, there it is. So this is going to be res assets, I guess, sprites. Actually, I'm going to put this in its own thing called icon. Make their icon. And then move the icon stuff to that. All right, cool. There, that should work, I think. Yeah, and it should have the icon. Well, it looks like the icon is there. Error opening file. I wonder what's even trying to load this because nothing should be. Well, that's why we can just go find out. No, that looks okay. Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Godot hates when you move things around outside the editor. Yeah, but I thought I had updated all of what it would update anyway. I guess we could just reload this. Maybe that'll fix it. I don't know why that's taking so long. <laughs> this does not inspire confidence. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. No more error. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I think this is the most basic thing we could possibly check in as like a first commit here. We need this open. Let me close all this stuff. There we go. Okay, so we have a git ignore. I did not change anything there. What is what's going on? Hmm. Get attributes. Where'd that come from? Maybe Godot added that? No, Godot couldn't have added that. Did we have one of those over here? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, sure, fine engine configuration got a cs proj file got a solution file oh this is problematic already isn't it oh my god <laughs> i wanted the solution file to be in the root
Also, this didn't even capture the icon change. What happened there? It did happen there. Does get status know what's different? I guess let's just get add game. Huh. It's still strange. How is it not finding the icon? Did I delete it? <laughs> is that why this thing stopped complaining at me? No, it's right there. But get status doesn't know about this. Get add dot. Falling pads are ignored. Really? Really? Oh, icon because oh my god. So much for the whole it should end with two R. We're just deleting this. Two new lines. <clears throat> AJ, hey banana. Made this slightly less painful. Awesome. Good. <laughs> and EJ, thanks for resubbing. Adding projects is as simple as .NET solution add. Okay, yeah, let me let me try that. All right, so you're saying we can we can move this out, and then there's a project here which now needs to point at game. Does Godot know about this though? Like, will this just work? I'm a little hesitant. No dot slash, really? Oh, okay. Did it work? Okay, I think it worked. So I think this is the structure that we want now. Does this make sense? So we have our project .do alongside skeleseller.cs project. I think maybe this should be called game.cs project or something though. <clears throat> yeah, I'd rather call it game. So we probably need to rename some stuff. All right, well, let's close out the Godot just in case. And then we'll go rename this to just game. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Thanks, EJ. All right, then I think we can just reload this. EJ, how you like in the Mac world? <clears throat> I guess you were already using a Mac, but now is your main computer. Yeah, it looks like this worked. <clears throat> Not sure if you have to run .NET clean .NET restore. I wonder if that changed anything. No, it looks like everything's pretty much the same. I'm using much other than Zoom meetings for like a week. Don't even know. Too busy being on the beach, enjoying your life. Oof, that's your problem. You got to not enjoy your life like the rest of us. <clears throat> Actually, that's not even true. I, I very much enjoy my life right now. .NET 6. Yeah, what should we use? 8, I guess. Oh, wait, what's this? Condition, if it's Android, use 7. If it's iOS, use 8. I don't know what that's about, but I think we need to change this. So that we use eight by default. Oh, that's your new fun project. What are you what are you doing with the home lab though? Is it like a Zoom meeting cloner? So you can be in 10 Zoom meetings at a time? Imagine how much less you'd get done. 
For every word that a normal human hears, EJ hears 10 words. I am freezing right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so I don't just upgrade this to eight, right? I got to go do something else now too. And presumably, does the solution need to change at all? Probably not, no. Wait a second. All right, sure. <laughs> I will wait one second. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I think I'm going to probably create a task task for dark storm to set up the integration tests using this and the unit tests using n unit. I probably only want us using one assertion library though. Maybe double click a script in GD, it creates the CS project. Oh, really? So you're saying if I were to click this, we have a new CS project file? Oh, it created the solution file, I think. Well, something created that solution file. This part looks like it's fine. I think I think this got created. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a lot of struggle for this. So there was a solution file here. Is that the only solution file that existed? Yeah. I thought they were sin. Don't have a gaming PC anymore. It's a virtualized system that I can have a gaming PC plus all my other random stuff. Ah, I see. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> the only solution should be the root one. Yes, yeah, something created this other one, and I'm guessing it's Godot, and I don't know how. And uh, this is... This sure is something. So if we just RM that, <laughs> what happens? <laughs> Probably it'll just get recreated, right? So is it when I start Godot that it happens? So far, nothing new in this folder. I want to close out everything else that we have. Oops. It overwrote it. I think it kept the same one. I'm not sure though. 422 stable. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder if I should try that out at some point. All right, if I, if I open this, do we end up with a new file over here? Doesn't look like it. CSproj still has .NET 8. Yeah, I think this just worked. I guess if I click this, does anything happen here? I mean, it opens in a new VS Code window. That maybe we can never do anything about. But that part doesn't really matter. I think it's working. Get status. Shouldn't show anything different. Yeah, I think it's working. So now how do I get this thing to use .NET 8.0? I probably need like a .NET clean .NET restore or something. Did that add anything? No, looks, looks like we're maybe fine. Yeah. All right, I think we got the basic setup here. Yeah. Thanks, EJ. All right, so next we need launch.json. Pretty sure it automatically changes when you save your solution or CS project. Automatically changes what though? You mean the target framework? The project thing you're probably looking for is there. Yeah. I guess we'll have to figure that out. Cause yeah, I don't know. Like if I just modified this, I don't see any other things. Like it doesn't show any changes there. I guess, is there anything superficial we can change about this? Maybe just a comment, test. Aha. No, that, that was normal. That was expected. There's no aha. Yeah, it's deleted. I'll change this later anyway. Okay, yeah. All right, well, I think we're probably good for now. I, I think the only other thing I wanted to do is add a launch.json in. And that should look like what the other thing had. 
but the launch adjacent is for me specifically, right? So where do we want that to exist? In the root, is there one Oops. lower than that? Nope, just in the root. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's also go add one in the root, make dir. Oh, do we have a VS code? No, yeah. Uh, yeah, Quickie Joe knows about it and was asking in Discord about how to fix it and I think probably just didn't get around to fixing it. <clears throat> right, now what do we need inside of that thing? Launch.json. Oh, there were extensions and stuff here too. Settings, do I, do I want any of this? What are my settings for this? Format on save, the default formatter. Tasks.json. Build. Is that windy? <laughs> windy, my boy. <laughs> hey, windy. <laughs> Is your nightmare day over, windy? You're in for a surprise on Discord after you finish your stream? Is that what these nine notifications are for? Should I be looking at these now? I'm just going to read this now. Oh, logo ideas. Whoa. Oh, I'm showing these on stream. But first, wait, before I forget this, hang on. I want to... Uh, what is on my clipboard right now? Oh, yeah, this. Okay, yeah, I want to make... Um, oh, my God, I don't know why I keep getting, like, turned upside down about this. Did we make a launch.json? No, we did not. There. So, now we have a play button that I guess we can access through here. And we just change this from this to this. And we're good. Play. Cannot find the task build. I guess I need a task for build, huh? <laughs> Cat tasks.json. Yeah, so let's copy this in to here. All right, there we go. Now we should be able to press this button, right? Would you look at that? How'd you get like three months in and then start making another game? I actually never did proper Adam Learns content. That's how. Now, let me all show you, let me show you all the wonderful, wonderful work of Quickie Joe. Look at this. Here's some logo works in progress. Let me close that. So I have not looked at these before now. Let's take a look. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, wow. Okay, so the ones that stand out to me, uh, this, and I think this one, I think are my favorite ones. Yeah. And then, I think this one's pretty cool too. I mean, they're all good. Don't get me wrong. They're all good. I just, yeah, I, I like this one quite a lot. Second down, first column is my fave. Yeah. What's the game about? Check out this, which is what the game's about. The, the FAQ is there. And then where these come from, uh, Quickie Joe made these. Break out the poll. Well, I don't want to have people be forced to choose one because like, for example, I would pick these two. And if you had me pick one, it would make it seem like this is just undesired, but it's it's not that way. So yeah, just share your opinions directly in chat. I'll just put this to the side. I guess turn on my keyboard camera again. So yeah, so EJ likes this one as well. Like the second on the left and third on the left columns. Yeah, these two. So this one doesn't communicate selling to me exactly. 
Oh, the big one, second row. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think this is my favorite. And yeah, I think the only thing I'd probably do maybe is make the skull a tiny bit more cartoonish. Like I was I was picturing like a a, a very lighthearted vibe. And this is almost like a spooky skull. <laughs> Look like the sign looking one on the right too. Yeah, that's pretty nice too. I like that one. Man, this is awesome. This is so cool. Yeah, I got to respond to this later today. I'm going to write this down. Well, I just marked the, the thread on red, so that should work. Top right would make for a nice banner. I think you would expect the logo for the game to be in the game too. Excuse me. I do like this though. I think I also like the coins there. Also, I think the coins could be used in place of this potion, for example. And then... Uh, I did, sorry, a thought just struck me as I was saying that. If you take out of the skull and crossbones, if you take out the left two bones here, you get the letter K. I wonder if we could use that instead of the letter K. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it, DJ. Because... In the end, I'm I'm pretty heavily leaning toward this one on the left over here. Yeah. Top right is a touch busy for a logo. Yeah, it does have a lot going on. But I, yeah, I really like this. Okay. Anyway, this is awesome. The game is getting more and more real. Yeah. Very cool. One of the coins in the skull, I like, yeah. <laughs> as long as as long as I'm going to DJ's favorite. All right. I definitely want to thank Quickie Joe for that. It's amazing turnaround time too. So have I I got this to build. I guess I did not get a debug thing working, but I guess this is the same as debugging. So can we open up whatever that script was that I had? This one and just put a breakpoint here. If I hit play, is this the same? Yeah, nice. Okay. Now, what is this? What does this say? It says run and debug. Is there any way to change that? I guess not. It's always run and debug. Okay. Yeah. I just wasn't positive there was like a, a standalone run thing that will not hit any of your breakpoints. It can be useful sometimes if you're like, I don't want to mute all the breakpoints. I'm going to buy the domain. To be honest, I wasn't. I don't think it'd be a great idea. I'm not sure. So if I had the domain, I would probably either redirect to Steam or have like a really simple landing page there. And I just, I don't think any is really, either of those is that important. Skulls are not liked in several parts of the world. I think, so I'm, I'm aware of that, but I think like the main character is going to be a skeleton and I think there's no way to get around showing a skeleton. Like I know that they cover a lot of skeletons with like masks or they just give them skin in other games sometimes. And yeah, dropping it from the logo wouldn't be so bad because at least they could still be in the game. I wonder if bones are a problem. <clears throat> if you're selling it, you should. You think so? But like would a lot of people find it? Wouldn't I just want the Steam result to be the top result anyway? I just I just didn't see a lot of value in doing that. Make the arachnophobia game like in uh arachnophobia mode like in grounded. Replace all the skulls with like broccoli or something. What are we doing? The chicken soft thing? End unit is a must. Do we go with this one for now and try adding chickens off later if we end up needing it? Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Valuable for press kits. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, that's the one argument I could see for it. But I was just thinking back to my Botland days. And how I don't think it ever mattered. <laughs> that's because Botland didn't do very well. 
This game's going to be the best game. All right. I think we can check this in. Yeah. I kind of want to save around that VS Code folder, but it should be fine. Okay. Oh, wait. Why are these being checked in? Oh, that's why. Oh, my God. That's the other get ignore thing that I wanted. Oh, I knew there was something. VS Code, Code, Visual Studio Code. There. All right, what do we have here? Oh, interesting. This has us. The exclamation mark means it's not going to ignore that, right? Uh, yeah, hmm. I think we would want this to be ignored. And I think we just ignored the entirety of the VS Code folder over here, right? Cat, get ignore. No, we didn't. Wait, what? If we didn't, then doesn't that mean it's online? It is. <laughs> it's right there. Wait a second, then. How did... How are you running this, then, Darkstorm, if you don't have Godot 4 as an environment variable? What's the downside? Five bucks? Uh, I looked it up. I think it was like 13 or something. And yeah, that's the only real downside. Well, and I mean... Okay, more realistically, the downside is you're not just buying the domain, you're doing something with it. And doing something with it takes time. And even like setting up a press kit and like a nice landing page, that's all something I'd have to put time into that's not working on the game. <laughs> you're going to buy the domain and redirect it to your Steam page? <laughs> I can just add M variables on my machine. Right, I get that, but I thought you didn't have this. How are you running Jump Royale? I mean, I'll check this stuff in. That's fine. I don't I don't see a problem with this. Okay, so add foundational structure. There's nothing game specific about this yet. It's just some folders and Let's leave it at that. All right, sync changes. You just edit the path. Huh, okay. Okay, cool. So as far as I'm concerned, I think that's pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to create a task for you, Darkstorm, which is to clean up my mess. <laughs> I kid, of course, but there is some merit to what I just said. Um, where is here? Here we go. You know, it'd be nice to have add item at the top. So I don't need to scroll down all the way. Is there a way to do this? There isn't seriously. You got to scroll down every time you want to do this. Huh? Kind of sucks. Okay. Well, scale seller. So we'll say add unit. Oh, wait, no, no, no. This is already a task I had. Or was it? Get testing set up. Here it is. For your testing library we use, make sure it accommodates Godot nodes. Uh, that's not really important anymore. And add it. And then... Whoa, what happened there? And then add any instructions to the readme. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to assign this to Darkstorm. There we go. And now, how do we... Current iteration? Shouldn't I see this over there? I don't know how this works. Yeah, I don't know how this works. If I put this in progress, what happens? Is it going to current iteration? No. I think we need to give it an iteration. I'm just trying to figure out how any of this works. And I don't know what I'm doing. Iteration, here we go, current, done. There we go. But now in my items, that won't show up. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I ended up getting it. So that's good. So now we can... So yeah, eventually I think we would want to use this. And I guess I'll write that down for something in here. Prioritize backlog. Um, yeah, I'll just add it as a task. Add Godot specific testing. Oops. All right, this is not a P0. But probably add something like this and then modify the readme readme to include any instructions eg here's how i use the chicken soft stuff if i had it quit automatically it would crash yeah all right so create that set this as p1 and milestone yeah checkpoint one we can always bump it all right anything else oh yeah for that task i just assigned to dark storm I want to edit this really fast and say and add it under what are we calling it? Uh, I had the project structure somewhere. I think I've closed it since then. Yeah, I did. I don't know what I wanted it to be called. Oh, well, doesn't matter. There was game. I guess we just call it like unit test or something, maybe. C sharp test. As opposed to Godot test. I'm open to discussion on the name. Migrate the analyzers, discuss in the group if a rule gets in your way. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, for any development-specific discussions, feel free to just use the DMs for that because I don't think Quickie Joe probably is going to be interested in the, like, which analyzers we're using. For game design, for art, for just overall, like, anything that might pertain to more than just developers, I think definitely feel free to use. And I gave Quickie Joe access to all of the code here, but I don't expect him to use any of it. I mean, maybe he'll like download the game to play it or something. Actually, yeah, I guess that's a good reason. In fact, we should probably put running information in the in the README itself. I'll put that. Up. I'll, I'll assign that as maybe one of my next tasks. Add information on how to run the game to the README. Yeah, this is for anyone who joins the project who isn't going to be building it constantly. I'm not even totally sure what we need to do. I think it's download Godot Mono. Download Godot Mono. Make sure it's that version. Then clone this repo. And then probably just open the, the project file. It should be as simple as that. I'm not actually positive, but yeah, this is something that needs to be done for milestone one, probably assigned to me and probably make it P zero and probably put that as an in-progress task. Whoa, whoa, quit it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Nice. We got some tasks that are getting done. So now let's go do it. Yeah. So add information on how to run the game. So this is 28. So we're going to go modify the readme. Running the game. Let me type this in. Fixes 28. There we go. 
Okay, so download Godot Mono. This is not the same as regular Godot. Where is it? Yeah, it's actually godotengine.net. I guess we just linked to download and it figures out where we should go. Yeah. AKA godotengine-.net. Okay, then clone this repo. And then the only other step should just be open Godot Mono with your project. I guess if we go to quit the project list, open Godot Mono, and then click import. Yeah. Click import and navigate to the, where's the project? It's in game. Godot file from this repo. And then click the play button at the, in Godot. Yeah, cool. I think it's it. I think it's a whole, that's all we need. Should we update the editors? They just released 4.2.2. We could, what's in it? I wasn't really sure if that would do anything. <laughs> All right, what do you have in it? Is there, oh, highlights, here we go. 400 improvements, review the complete list of changes with our interactive change log. Improved command line export pipeline. Okay, that's pretty nice. Fixed audio crackling, I wasn't on Windows, so I didn't notice that. Workaround for some types of corrupted scene load errors. Oh, I think I had a million of these. Yeah. Fixes to animation features after the move. Okay, sounds good. And a lot more fixed duplicate key issues. Visualization and order, profiler script, faster LSP message. Oh man, really? This would have really helped. This fix frame delay, fix that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we should probably update. Let me check this in. I haven't tested this, but I think this is all you need to do for this. So I'm gonna commit that and we'll push and it should just mark my task as fixed, right? Yeah, now it's closed. And so this should get updated too. Yep, nice. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Is there web export in the mono version again or are you changing anyway and people can just play local test builds and set? Yeah, I don't think web exports are going to work or else I probably would have listed that as one of the big changes, but that's okay. So yeah, I think we're just going to update Godot so that we have um, just the newest stuff. <clears throat> so 4.2.2. So I'm going to go download that. Download. I guess I want this one. And now what do I do? Just drag this to applications, I guess. And that's it. We should be on 4.2.2 now, right? Yep, 4.2.2. Go to Skele Seller. I expect everything should just work. I'd be kind of surprised if it didn't. Yeah, it's working just fine. I don't even think that changes the code at all, right? Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is still a good thing to keep in mind. I think there was, oh, maybe that's about it. 
Okay. So what other tasks do we have? I want to thank you for sharing your process. Notice a few things for me at GitHub projects and try to use it on my own project. Really cool things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great, Palazis. And I think that's what's nice about streaming is this goes both ways. I've learned a ton of things from viewers and I then pass on those things to other viewers. So I guess it's all just, it's mostly viewers helping. <laughs> it's rarely me doing something of my own. Play a local version anyway, as you have a solid amount of testers that trust you. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it'll be a problem. But it's definitely not as easy as a web version. And if Godot were to release a new version tomorrow and say, hey, guess what? We fixed uh, C Sharp web export. I'd be like, okay, sure. That's how we'll do the checkpoints then. Increasing game dev demo related attacks from compromised accounts. I take some extra care to make sure, mark the download properly and maybe share hashes, et cetera. Yeah, and maybe say only trust me. Did I write something about the checkpoints over here? Okay, no, I did not. I'm going to write that down. Cause that is definitely a good point. So scale seller release checkpoint number one. Copy this. Maybe if the web export thing hasn't been fixed, then maybe tell people only to trust uh, downloads from news. On Discord, I'll never DM someone a build. Yeah, also, if I have the domain, host the builds there for further, I don't know, assurance. And then make the feedback form and make it very clear that if you play the game, you darn well better provide feedback. Yeah. Based on stealing the Discord session, I see. Yeah, and I mean, I can't stop anyone else from saying, hey, here's Skelicell or go play it. And they really have a virus or something, right? That could happen in other people's discords. But I can at least protect my own viewers. And I, I think people are probably mostly in the loop if you're going to be playing this game on when I plan on releasing and like how you know you can trust me. This should be assigned to me. Yeah, I think we're good. Roadmap. Hmm. Okay, so tomorrow is going to be, I wrote this, no stream. The Scala Seller stuff I'll work on is mostly prototyping in Godot. I want to get a couple things. I want to get a state machine thing set up and I want to get an entity component system. Do I have ECS as a thing? No. Okay, entity component system. It's possible to have a private build available on Steam. Like you can't buy the game, but you can give out test keys or something. I think so, but I'm not concerned about that until like past checkpoint number two, maybe. For anyone who hears this whole thing about checkpoints, by the way, I've got it listed in a document you unfortunately don't have access to. But here are the general checkpoints that I'm thinking of. So sometime in June probably is when everyone can probably try the build at first. And I plan on having like battles in towns, but very, very basic forms. So picture like possibly even worse looking than the prototype. So there wouldn't be a lot of content. There wouldn't be saving and loading. It's just testing the basic gameplay loop because we didn't have towns originally. Didn't have the town originally. And from this, we'll probably get a bunch of feedback. So even just that will be pretty valuable. Then the second checkpoint is like, okay, now let's add in more content. Let's start to build on that stuff. And then the third checkpoint is basically the beta. And then we launch after that. So this is not like a super long timeline. <laughs> 
and it might be tough to do all this. Um, yeah, so state machine and then any extra time I might do scene loading. Actually, I really shouldn't do that. I should do only the stuff I can do off stream or have to do off stream. Consider making the scene loader. Consider making another repo with any licensed assets in it and making it a sub module may need to update the readme with instructions how to run the game after doing that. Maybe list which repos you need access to. Oh yeah, let's update the journal for today. Started the GitHub repo, didn't write much code, was mostly boilerplate. Oh, and then Darkstorm's gonna add in the analyzers too. I feel like I should make a, a task for that. Add analyzers for C sharp. Yeah. Assign to Darkstorm and Milestone 1. This can be taken from Jump Royale. Oh, I never made a thing out of that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I put a couple of tasks for you. Darkstorm, I'm assuming you're here and can hear me say this. Uh, these aren't so important that you need to get them done like as soon as possible. You know, it's just what I consider to be the most important task about to PR. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, let's go and modify a couple of these things. So we have idle ascendance and we're going to make another one here for JR jump Royale. And then I want something for entity component system. What's the closest thing that that's like? Do I have any game dev things? I guess like design document. Yeah, long words or terms. Okay. ECS entity component system. Cool. Yeah, well. We got started. I mean, this is day two of all this stuff. Yeah. The other thing that happened that I, I just made a YouTube video about this and for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, there's the new video command, but I just hit as of today, the 4,000 public watch hours mark, which means I can finally unlock ad revenue. And today should have been the first day that I actually got some money from it. But the estimates, I don't think update for two days. So it won't be till Thursday that I actually find out how much today was worth from a video perspective. And I suspect it's going to be somewhere on the order of like a dollar or five dollars or something like that. Um, like not a lot. So <laughs> it's mostly just like, hey, I'm spending a bunch of hours making videos anyway. Might as well make some tiny amount of money from it. Yeah, I'm happy about that. But I think today went well. I, I've I've been like consistently saying this for probably about a month now, but I'm very excited about this stuff. I am looking forward to kind of seeing this game come to life and then having the main character die. <laughs> and that's when the game really comes to life. All right, I'm going to get going. I've been streaming for what, like, yeah, it's a little over six and a half hours, I think. So let's go see who have I not rated. Okay, I don't think I've rated these people or this person. I don't know who this is. Yeah, okay, but they're doing Godot game development. So let's go raid them. Heavy. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you all for watching. I'll be back on Friday. I know the schedule has been a little bit weird lately, but we're going to get into a groove of game dev at some point. So yeah.
I'm excited. See you all. Take care. Have a good rest of your day.